Welcome to another Unreal Tips and Tricks. In this episode, we'll look at how a keyboard shortcut based workflow can save you time and improve your economy of motion. While the time and effort savings may seem insignificant, counted in mere seconds per action, over an entire work day or work week, those savings can really add up. Over a multi part series of tips and tricks videos, we'll be looking at many shortcuts that can be used in the viewport as well as some basic editor shortcuts and finally we'll also look at some great material editor shortcuts too. Let's get started. The first thing we'll want to do is look at the location in Unreal Engine where you can customize your keyboard shortcuts. For that we're going to go up to the edit menu at the top and select editor preferences. When the editor preferences window comes up we're going to look under general keyboard shortcuts. In keyboard shortcuts you'll find all of the options that can have a keyboard shortcut applied to them and then of course you'll see the keyboard shortcuts to the right of those options and you can see if you scroll down there are quite a few now we're not going to be covering every single keyboard shortcut today there are shortcuts for using sequencer for doing blueprints shortcuts for all sorts of different parts of Unreal Engine but we are going to cover some of the most commonly used in your day-to-day -day workflow. I mentioned that using keyboard shortcuts can really save on the time and effort needed to perform an action. Let's look at a couple of quick examples of exactly how keyboard shortcuts can do that. And we're going to look at four different examples here. So basically this kind of, you know, the, the amount of effort and time you save kind of depends on where your mouse currently is in the editor obviously but let's just imagine that you know we're starting with our mouse cursor down here in the content browser or somewhere over here on the details panel and we want to save the level we've just finished doing some work and we're ready to save now we can go all the way up here and click on save current but that's not actually going to save everything we may have changed a lot of things materials uh, blueprints, the level itself, and this is not going to save necessarily everything. If you want to save everything, I like to use Save All. And for that, we'd have to go all the way up to the File button at the top left here, and then scroll down and click Save All. So clearly, we've got a couple of mouse clicks to perform, and we had to drag our mouse all the way from the bottom right to the top left. So there's a lot of motion there as well. Now, the quick way to do that would simply be to press Control shift s and that's going to save everything that you have modified, which is anything that's going to have a star indicator in the content browser. Now, remember, we're only talking about a very small savings here, fractions of a second in this case, but those fractions can add up. Something else you might do very commonly is to locate an asset in your content browser and open it up in the static mesh editor to make some adjustments to it. So let's take this chair for example here. Now in order to find that in the content browser normally, I'd either go down here and dig through the content browser until I found it, uh, you know, using these folders here. So I might go to meshes and then uh, look under dining and then there's the chair, right? Or I could type in the search box here somewhere for the name of the chair. So I might type uh, chair here and that would bring up the chairs that I have in the project. Now another option would be to right click the chair and then select browse to asset. And then from here to open it in the editor I'd need to simply double click that to bring up the static mesh editor. So we can see there's a lot of motion here again, a lot of mouse clicks, but there are a couple of shortcuts you can use instead. First of all, if you simply want to locate it in the content browser, you can simply press Control B. So if I go back to my content window here, and then I press Control B with the chair selected, it's going to find it for me. Now if I want to actually open it, I still have to double click it to bring up the static mesh editor. Let's go back to the content window, but if I want to go straight into the contents uh, static mesh editor for this chair, I simply press Control E, and that brings the chair right up in the static mesh editor, and now I can work with it from here. So you can see how you save a lot of motion and clicks there for something that you do on a pretty common basis when working inside Unreal. Another good example might be setting bookmarks. Setting bookmarks in your viewport is a great way 
to be able to move from position to position, a, a place that you've set that you really like the view. Now this isn't something that you do very frequently, but it's good to know the shortcuts. Normally you'd have to go up to the top left of the viewport under viewport options, click on that, go down to bookmarks, and then go down to set bookmark, and then click on one of these available bookmark presets, so zero through nine. And then to jump to the bookmark, you'd again go back to bookmarks, and then you'd click on the jump to bookmark. But instead, let's say we set a bookmark over here, and then if we want to set that bookmark, let's set this as bookmark nine. So we'd hold control and press nine. So now if I move my camera somewhere else and then press 9, that will jump me back to the bookmark. So setting the bookmark is control plus one of the number keys, and jumping to that bookmark is simply pressing the number key. All right, so we've seen some quick examples of how you can save a lot of motion as well as mouse clicks and ultimately time by learning these keyboard shortcuts. I'm not going to go through all of the other keyboard shortcuts in the same manner because I think these few examples help illustrate the point. So let's actually just go through some of the commonly used shortcuts and we'll start with viewport shortcuts. The Unreal Editor viewport uses the intuitive commonly used W, A, S, and D keys. So what you do is you'll hold your right mouse button and obviously while you're holding that you can rotate your camera around and then if you want to go forwards it's going to be W backwards is A, and then you can strafe to the left with S and to the right with D. Now these are pretty commonly known, but there are a few others that we can make use of as well. If we want to go down, we can hold Q, and if we want to go up, we can hold E. And finally, if you'd like to temporarily change the field of view, you can use the Z and C keys. By holding the right mouse button down and then holding Z, you're going to increase the field of view zooming out, and then C will decrease the field of view, zooming in. Once you let go of the right mouse button, it should snap back into place. Now you may have heard of game mode in the viewport, and this is when Unreal is showing what the scene or level will look like if it was in game, what the player would see. Now currently we're in game mode, and what it does is it hides all of the widgets and things such as reflection capture probes and game related objects. But if we need to see those things, normally we'd go up to the viewport options and then we'd select game view and uncheck that. However, as you can see, the shortcut for that is going to be G. Now take note, if you ever press a shortcut key related to the viewport and nothing happens, make sure you first right click in the viewport and then you should be able to use the shortcut. In the viewport, we can also use what's called immersive mode. This is also found in the top left menu here. And if we press the F11 key, that will take us into immersive mode. It essentially makes the viewport take up the entire screen. Now you'll notice in immersive mode, we don't have the basic toolbar at the top here anymore. So if we wanted to play the level, we wouldn't be able to do that using the button. But instead, we have a keyboard shortcut for that, and that's Alt-P. So now you can see I'm actually in the sequence that's played by the game when you run it. And to get out of the game from here, we will simply press Escape. And let's go ahead and return from immersive mode by toggling it off with F11. Now let's go over here to our little ice bucket. And you'll notice that we've got a little particle effect playing on the ice bucket. Now this is called real-time mode. That's why we can see the particles displaying. And sometimes real-time mode is not something you want turned on because it can affect your performance. If you've got a lot of things going on, you want to be able to turn those off. Or if you're debugging and you don't want to see these things in the viewport while you're debugging, uh, the way you would turn that off normally is to go up to the top left again, viewport options, and just uncheck real-time. However, the keyboard shortcut for that, as you could probably see there, is Control-R. When you press that, the particles are no longer animating, and you can see real-time is set to off. And this is just a great way of being able to turn off all of the animated things, anything that's uh, particle-based or anything like that, uh, physics-based, all that stuff will be completely shut off. But if you want to turn it back on, of course, we'll toggle it with Control-R.
in conjunction with debugging and seeing your performance, if you ever want to see the FPS in the viewport very quickly, normally you'd use the console. Now the console is brought up with the tilde key, and that will allow me to type in a console command. And from here I could type stat FPS. But let's go ahead and turn that back off. And obviously another way would be to use a menu, but a quicker way is simply to press Control shift h and this will bring up the stats. On the next Unreal Tips and Tricks, we'll cover some additional viewport-related shortcuts that come in quite handy for debugging and optimizing your level, as well as shortcuts related to selecting and manipulating objects in the viewport. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.